this is truly what public television is all about. The folks of Nebraska wanted to see more racing on Nebraska ETV, and we are pleased and proud, as I said, to be able to bring it to you. And we're back underway in our 368 feature. The yellow flag's still flying yet. The light's not out. Uh, somebody's getting excited. You're right. Mike Boston bringing them down a little too fast for the starters. To like. Mike Boston, check that. He's a Lincoln driver. I don't know how I pass him over thinking a Knoxville driver. Now, he's a Lincoln driver. Lincoln, Nebraska, leading the field right now in first place. So they'll slow once again, going into the back stretch. Starter taking a look. And they'll go around nope. one more time. Still a yellow flag. Maybe, uh, uh, yeah, the mistake in the lineup there. Looks like they're going to try and move a few drivers around. As they sit right now, Mike Boston is our leader coming out of turn number four on the pace lap. The one car of Todd's plane. Starter giving them the signal for one more lap, so this should be, we should see green racing next time around. Well, I mentioned it was Todd's plane that instead of the one X car, it's the one M car of Don Drow Jr. And they've got the green flag. So it's Drown, not Splay. Drown takes a high line again, he kisses the wall. Boston low. Drown high, side by side at the start finish line. And again, Drown high, Boston low. Drown trying to slingshot his way to the lead, and he's got it. Don Drown Jr. has the lead. A lot of activity behind him in the back of the pack. And great racing here at the front of the pack between Brown and Boston. Griffiths in third. The two car of Rodney Brown is in fourth position. Key positions to watch in the track as we got contact high in turn number one. Just about to mention as the yellow flag flies, keep an eye on Bruce Divis in the 24 and John Gerloff in the 24B. Looks like Todd Splane may have gotten into the wall there in turn one if that's car number 1X. That yep. is the 1X car. He was upset that I had him wrong. I had him in the lead earlier on and now Absolutely. I got him into the wall. There's a replay of it here. On the right of your screen, Todd's... Looks like... Oh! I don't know how he got in that position. This is a track where you keep turning left. It looks like Mia tried to turn right at that corner. I'm not sure. Todd's playing out of Lincoln, Nebraska, the 1X car. Kelly had his 15 minutes earlier on, thinking that he was towards the front of the field. Another one of the colorful aspects about dirt track racing is you often see people with the same number of car, but you'll see an initial afterward, and that's what separates one car from the other. It'll look real hard. And you got to look real hard at a car going by at 125 miles an hour. Not always easy to do <laughs> when you're sitting still. Wishing you're going by at 120 miles an hour. It'll be Don Drought Jr. and the 1M car as we take a look at that 1X car. And they've got the hook out there again. Or are they going to try and push? Now they've got the hook out there. Yeah, and I his day is done. I think he's got some suspension damage there on the... Not the passenger side. Of course, it's a one-person car. But on the right side of the car, when he tapped the wall. So he's definitely done for the night. Drought, Boston, Griffiths, the two car of Rodney Drought, the 24 car now sitting in fifth place. That's Bruce Divis. Two places back in the 24B is Jeff, or rather John Gerloff. Your points leader is Friday Speedway in the 360 sprints in one and two. So the points championship race always an interesting one here. While we're waiting in this yellow flag situation, let's take a look at the ARCA late model results. Kyle Burke, a dominating performance. He took the, the green flag, took the lead on the opening lap and never gave it up. He was challenged a couple of times by Ed Kosiski, who finishes in second place, and Johnny Sadoff, who challenged early but finished in third. Dale Zeitner in the 60 car, finishing fourth, and John Anderson in the 21X slides into fifth place. Awaiting the restart here in our 360A feature, 19 laps remaining. The green, the yellow lights out, we should see green light this time around. Great jump on the start by our leader, Don Drow Jr. Boston coming low, but look at Drow, pull away, going into turn number one. Drow, Boston, Griffiths, Rodney Drow.
drought. And Bruce Dennis now sliding in, making a challenge on Griffiths for third place as Bruce Dennis slides into fourth. Looking back at the pack, John Gerloff is also making a challenge there for the leaders. Meyer spinning out in turn four. And blue, missing the wall by inches. And with the 91 car sitting up there at turn number four, that'll that, bring out a yellow flag. Make that the 91 car of uh, Jeff Griffiths, rather. And on that spin out, the 24 car of Bruce Divis moves into third place ahead of Rodney Trout. And behind him in the 24B is John Gerloff. Jeff Griffiths uh, must have stalled up there in turn four, needing a push. Of course, these sprint cars don't have the, the starters in them, so they, they will need a, a push. It looks like he's just getting loose up there in turn four. Little too much. You know, I've done that same thing in that same spot. <laughs> <laughs> Griffith is now underway, and he'll go. join the fight once again, but he'll be way back of the pack. He was in third position. And they may be pushing him into the infield here, or just down out of the way. They come around. Pace car is out. No contact. Looks like... The 1M car of Don Drow Jr., the 22 of Boston, the 24 of Divis, Rodney Drown in the 2 car, the 24B car of John Gerloff, the points leader. I would imagine with the, the points as close as they are, Gerloff just needs to stay close to Bruce Divis to maintain that points lead. Absolutely. They're just less than 100 points. As long as he's a few cars behind it. It really shouldn't make that much difference. John Gerloff could walk away tonight. The points champion for ID Speedway in the 360s. He can just hang in there and avoid any uh, you know, major contact or it just pretty much don't get knocked out of the race at this point. He's always a strong competitor. Always going to finish where he needs to finish. He can just stay in the race. Well, you don't get to the top of the points lead without being a smart driver. And Absolutely. obviously, in a situation like this, where you're running behind your closest competitor, just, just a position or two, you've got to stay out of the marbles on the high side. You don't want to get too low that you get out of the out of position or anything like that. Let somebody fly by you and lose several spots. Yeah, Jeff Griffiths uh, getting loose up there caused this yellow. Really, he's pretty much locked up third place. Uh, the, the fight for the championship is between Bruce Divis and John Gerloff. Just uh, 100 points separate them there. Lesson. Mike Mason bring in fourth position. Case car pulling off. We should see green racing conditions after this. Yellow light is out. Next time around, we'll be racing. They'll start him up along the back stretch. Single file going into one. The 1M, Don Drow Jr. Getting a good jump past the cone, flying into turn number three. Boston also got a great line going low. Look at Boston in the 22 car. He had the lead earlier. He wants it back. But oh, look at the power flying down that front straight for the 1M car of Don Drow Jr. It's a very small cushion that Don Drow Jr. is working with going into turns one and two and three and four, but just big enough for him to get the momentum coming off the turns and just slingshotting him down the straightaway, just stretching his lead that much more and more each time around. Got a chance to take a look at the fight for third and fourth between Rodney Drown in the two and Bruce Divis in the 24. Drown going high, Divis going low, and Divis is lit from fourth all the way into second place. Look at Bruce Divis fly around the track as he takes second place away from Mike Boston. Looking back, looking back, looking for John Gerloff. 24B car, there it is, coming out of turn four, the white one. Now heading into turn one, not too far back. Jeffrey Lowry, the 45 car. Yeah, Gerloff wants to drive a smart race, but he doesn't want to drive a cautious race. He no. can't afford to slide too far back. If you drive cautious, you're going to start to get careless. Yeah, accidentally, of course, but you know, just control the car and keep it like you usually do it, and you should be fine. And of course, John Gerloff trying to do that. Bruce Divis, however, needs to extend his lead every opportunity he can. So he would like to walk away tonight with a win and maybe knock John Gerloff off, fall out of this race somehow to give Bruce Divis an opportunity. Divis 